Hello, everyone. My name is Kim Rogers, and I'd like to welcome you all to today's YRDM Professional What's New webinar. Our presenter today is George Ma, and he'll be talking you through the new advancements of CamWorks Wire EDM Professional. To our current customers, this is going to look very familiar, but uh, I think you're going to see some things that will also uh, be exciting for you and uh, help you to understand why we decided to do this webinar today. We do expect to have quite a number of questions today, so because we're limited on time, um, it would be great if you could share your questions in the Q&A field as you think of them, and then what we'll do is we'll be getting back to you later on, uh, as some of them will be technical in nature, and you know we are just uh, a little bit short on time, and we want to be able to get to everyone. So without taking up more time, um, I will go ahead and turn everything over to George, and he can get started. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being with us today. I will be your presenter, and we're going to take you on a quick tour of the salient points of the just released Wire EDM Professional by CamWorks. This is not an exhaustive list of all improvements. And as Kim mentioned, because of time constraints, if you do develop questions, please use the Q&A section of your meeting manager. The system has just, was just released and it builds on the existing CamWorks procedures. It is the next step in a continuous improvement path and it follows all of what you may or may not be using CamWorks where it is completely integrated in SolidWorks. It's a single file. You do not have to worry about multiple files and the toolpaths are all tied to the underlying solid body. So your design changes follow along. It is now much more streamlined for the new users to make it easier to become productive. As we say, it's currently released and if you are an existing user, the legacy data is not completely compatible, but the existing legacy module will be kept available for a minimum of two years. It supports your basic two axis EDM features, your basic two axis taper, cordless, four axis, and we're going to concentrate in the plus more into how it has changed what it does now today. You should be seeing the, the SolidWorks screen now. And Here's a very basic part. The processes that you're going to follow are going to be single tree integration. So you just jump into it without leaving the environment. Set your machine. That's the same as, as what you had before, where you can pick different machines, different models. set preferences, and this is the place where you are going to select what kind of wire you're using, the diameter, a lot of miscellaneous settings that are going to rule how it executes, including the selection of the post-processor, which as I said, if you are an existing user, we will provide a standard equivalent for what you already have. It makes you independent of the alignment of the part. And what we do is we use a coordinate system. So this coordinate system being the SOLIDWORKS construct, you can pretty much position on any alignment that you want, any position in which you need this to lay on the screen. 
And the process looks like this. You go to the EDM. If you have already your settings done, you indicate to the system, here is my origin. This is how it's going to land on the table. The system has allocated by now a stock to operate on, bare minimum it needs. You can also manipulate it. And you go straight just to identify features. Find features, we'll analyze the part. It's gonna tell you, I found a two axis feature inside, inside, outside, depending on settings. And from here, you tell it, get me my toolpath. And now you have toolpath on, on the screen. If you selected your database, the databases are done based on manufacturer's data. And yes, you can load or not, you are ready to go. So it is an exercise now of let's make sure that it is posted and let's make sure that we can view the code. You now have code ready to go to the, to the machine. It does keep access to everything on the way of operations, which are all of the parameters. This is going to be familiar with the people already using it, where you can select different kinds of lead-in. You can select multiple glue stops, the corner treatments from inside, outside. All of that remains pretty similar. What it does, let's go back. It introduces a property data grid. What is that? Hiding here, and you can keep it, is a property manager data grid, which is basically access to the most commonly used parameters of the operation. So you do not really have to go edit the operations unless you want to. So your process will start to look like this. You are going to get your part, indicate, here is my origin. Use this to set some of the options if you, if you want. For example, in this part, I may not want to do the outer part. So we tell the system, don't find it. Now go for find features. It's gonna take a little bit longer. And once it is done, same process. Go ahead and rebuild and post and show me the code. What, what did it do? It identified features that are considered two axis because they have a straight wall. It identified features that were done with taper. In this case, if you can see the bottom of the screen, there is a taper between those. And it also identified features. Four axis features are now identified automatically out of the system. So with the help of your property manager, you do not have to go and edit every operation and every setting. So you don't have to keep figuring out where it's at. So if you go in here, you also have now automatic land and taper calculation. If we look at this part, all of the straight features might have been designed straight, but we might need to put a taper and a land to those. If we go here, because I'm going to do it on the stock, it will do it for everyone that is below. I can just indicate, get me a land and observe the toolpath when we do that. 
it will rebuild the toolpath and you now have a land and a taper and if you decide that that taper is not enough we'll go four when we accept that value it goes and it does that but only on the features that are that were designed straights features with explicit taper will be cut just the way the model dictates you should do that that would be the same as you going into a single one which you can still do find the setting where you have the control over the lantern taper tell it what it is and whether it's on top or bottom but in this case you can do it much 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 quicker so how does it do this the new methodology is going to use a user controllable plane what it does it goes we're going to take the part and once you tell me in the direction in which you are doing this it allocates the plane and that plane can be controlled here where do you want it now we have to make sure let me go so if we look at the at the part we have a different part here once you select your origin it allocates a plane and that plane can now be position to every place that you see it is good now this part has a it was done in purpose like that a problem where this face and that face are exactly the same so there is no place on this part for catching the the, the features so same exercise we tell the system where the origin is we adjust our plane and we might tell the system don't do the holes do the holes whichever then the process is the same, find features and two path. When it looks at the outside, and yes, we can use vertical walls to describe a feature now, you notice that it went below that because the plane, there is no way to make it intersect that. So how do I fix that? Here's where the human mind comes into the picture we look at that and we said, well, you are in a window that behaves exactly the same as any SOLIDWORKS windows. I want to clear this and I would like to replace this with a sketch that is a chain and you're done. Of course, from this point is the post it and show me the, the code. What else does it do? It does have the ability to recognize holes automatically. If you notice on this inner feature, there is a starting point where the system picks one and yes you can control that if if need be you could actually go in there and slide your start point to any place that you want and two path updates if you say well i need to pre-drill this or pop the holes we have the ability place the circle or a point in the space and we can tell the system you are going to find the start points and it's going to have a range of sizes that it needs to to find 
Hey, George, can I interrupt for just one yes. minute? Um, yes. I am seeing notes from the, the attendees that they can't see your screen. Um, can, some, can somebody pop in the chat just quickly and let us know if you can see that now or? Yes. Okay. All is good to go. Thanks, Paul. Which screen are we seeing? We, uh, we should be seeing the solid Yeah, I think you're screen. caught up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. It, it is possible that we're, we're lagging. I'm going to try to to give it some time when we switch windows. So if we go back to our PowerPoint, we can adjust parameters with the data grid, the property manager. We can control the plane, the plane position. We can let the system find automatically the starting holes that we're going to need. And we had mentioned before that four taxes features are now found find automatically. And it also supports non-planar features. Back to SOLIDWORKS. We are going to have a part that has some four axis features, some two axis features. And we know how this is going to create a problem when we have to create the equivalent sketch to guide the top guide. Can you see how this face is curved? Yes. So, because now it is fully supported for non planar faces the procedure would look like this. Set the origin, which it's always the, the place you start. Set your options like don't find the outside of that part. Find features. And of course, the more complex the geometry, the more it's going to take and rebuilt. And what it has done, it has taken the geometry that is underlying the solid body, regardless of whether the top or bottom are planar or not, and allocated a four axis feature, which is going to save us the countless hours that we have to spend in some systems to actually do the sketch that would be putting all of this geometry out into the plane at the top where the guides would be. There is more. It does support SOLIDWORKS patterns to simplify a little bit the code. So proteins were always supported. Now SOLIDWORKS patterns are support. So if we we have a part it has a pattern that was done with a SOLIDWORKS pattern. And we want to EDM that part. We are going to set it. There is my alignment. We are going to set, what are you trying to cut? I'm not interested on the outside of the part. I am interested in describing the stock as a cylinder about the Z. So when it finds features, it's going to try to find all of those based on our plane. If we tell it, check patterns, what is it going to do? It's going to find the features 
and then it's going to check if one of those was done with the SOLIDWORKS pattern and give us a single feature and apply that to all instances of the SOLIDWORKS pattern. So anything you do to one will be done to all of those. So we can say it in here. Oh, yes, by the way, let's go find also holes. So I can tell you to find the start points. And if you notice, it jumped to where I had the, the circle, which we control that. So it, it is building all of the rules, including how to do the glue stop. If you notice here, this glue stop became huge. That is because it's automatically calculating what size of glue stop we need to hold a piece of that size if you really want to do. And of course, we can pass this to simulation. So we can take a quick look at what this is going to do. It has the ability also to recognize a slug that is going to fall off well, after it goes through the stop and remove it. And all of the tools that you would want in simulations are going to be here. You can measure, you can compare to another file so you can see how it's being done. And you can see in here in our presentation that there is another option that is starting to pick here. Because it can be automated because it now has a lot of rules internally. We can run a one click programming. So eventually your process will look like this. Here is a part here is a part. And I'm going to give it a chance to stabilize because I'm getting messages that the internet connection is not as stable. Are we seeing the green gear part? Yes. Great. Thank you. So once we have in here the, the part, it is an exercise of set your choices. I want to do that as the origin, I will consider doing a STL file as my stock. Find inner outer so we can let it go. Find features. and toolpath. Or we could say, let's not do all of that. I'll just clear it out. After you do your, here is the, the EDM stock. Here are my choices. You take the solid to G code and it's going to go through all of the steps on its own all the way until it pops up the code. So that's the, the one click for you, ready to go to the simulation. So if we revisited a part, if we say, let's go ahead and open that part, I save it without, what's my process? Your process is set your alignment. In this case, I don't have to worry about stock because I'm going to use a square piece and I don't want to cut the outside and run the solid to G code. It's going to analyze all of that, find the features, generate the toolpath. and pop up 
the program ready to go. In fact, if you have an IG Char Mills machine and you're running their software, it can actually take all of the files that the IG Char Mills takes and put them automatically available to the machine, ready for you to go. Let's simulate. What is it doing? It's just going to be running around and around and around, getting your part cut, whether it's two or four or two axes with taper, pretty much done. It's still keeping on the underside the ability to go to the individual operation and get into all of the parameters that control that operation. So you do not lose control over the process. And that's in a nutshell how the just release version has evolved. And a list of the more notable capabilities, as I said, is not an exhausted, exhausting list because of the, the time, but it does give you an idea of how it's being developed. So we are Go engineer, and that's just another one of the tools, along with all of the CAMWorks, SOLIDWORKS CAM simulation that we that we provide. Kim. So for those of you who aren't familiar with Go Engineer, our goal has always been to uh, provide the tools that will help our customers to be successful. Uh, we offer various training options across all topics, uh, thousands of YouTube videos, tips and tricks and how to's, and a lot of very in-depth webinars. We have a very skilled tech support group along with 124 certified applic application engineers. We also offer um, various printing part services. We do also offer uh, PDM imp implementation and hosting services, along with other CAD process automation. And we have numerous locations across the U.S. and hope to be increasing those locations as time goes on. And of course, you can find us on social media. And to let you know, the CamWorks Wire EDM Pro has been released. And if you have an existing Wire EDM license, that will remain available, uh, we're told, uh, for about two years or possibly more. We know you guys will have a lot of questions following the webinar. So if you have more questions that are of a technical nature, feel free to address those to George Amata, that's jamata at goengineer.com, or myself for non-technical questions relating to purchases, transitioning, post handling, things like that. I, I am Kay Rogers at goengineer.com or Kroger's phonetically uh, at goengineer.com, or you can also contact your uh, CalMarks account representatives. You guys, thanks again for joining us today. We hope this was informational. Um, we look forward to talking to you guys soon and getting all of those questions answered. You guys have a good and safe rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon.